Please join me in our opening sentences from Psalm 51 and Proverbs 9. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Wisdom had prepared a feast for us. Let us eat and drink of God's gifts. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and sent the Spirit of your Son into our hearts. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, that all people may know the glorious liberty of the children of God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please join me in our morning psalm, Psalm 133. Oh, how good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head that runs down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron, and runs down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon that falls upon the hills of Zion, for there the Lord has ordained the blessing, life forevermore. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Let us enter into the prayer taught by our Lord, word by word, line by line. Holy Spirit, please guide us as we pray. This week we begin a four-week series as we dive in to the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer is one of the cornerstone disciplines of uh, the Christian tradition across the board. It is a prayer that Jesus taught uh, and is enshrined in two of the Gospels. This prayer is what should unite uh, Christians in their practice and in their devotion and in centering themselves and their identity as they follow Christ. We hear in the scriptures that the disciples came to Jesus as a rabbi and said, Lord, teach us to pray, because every rabbi had a different teaching on the essentials of prayer. How should we address God? What are the particular words? Are there special words that we should use in order to garner God's favor? And so Jesus taught them how to pray. And each week we're going to use a different translation of the Lord's Prayer. And this week it is a classic translation of the authorized King James Version, authorized, that's important, from Luke 11, verses 2 through 4. Jesus said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven so in earth. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us of our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Holy wisdom, holy word, thanks 
be to God. For those that grew up in the church, you were taught the Lord's Prayer. And there are two major versions out there. One that has debts, such as the Presbyterians, and the, those, the other version is one that has trespasses in it. Uh, and that is uh, common among the English-speaking uh, Catholic, Orthodox, and uh, other Protestants. Um, in fact, you would know uh, a denomination if it had roots to the Church of Scotland or Presbyterians because they would use debts instead of tra uh, trespass trespasses. And then there is the ecumenical Lord's Prayer, which cuts to the chase and uh, replaces debts and trespasses for sins. Forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. The Lord's Prayer, especially if you have recited it over and over and over for many years, becomes very much part of our identity and our religious practices. But how many times have we actually stopped and dwelled on each part of the prayer? And what Jesus was saying to his disciples when he taught them each part of the prayer. Today we're delving into the first part, the, the acclamation, uh, the, the connection part, the part where we are positioning our identity to that of God. The disciples asked Jesus, how shall we pray? And Jesus says something like this. Our Father, who is in heaven. Our Father, the, the very first word, our. It's not mine. Jesus didn't say my Father. And when we say it, it, we're not saying that God is mine alone. It's our. It is a universal belonging that God is the God of all creation, of all people. God is our Father. A father can be a very interesting term, especially nowadays. Does that mean that God is male? No, it doesn't. Not the way that Jesus was approaching it. Does it mean that, you know, God is, we're using paternalistic language, um, so could God be also our mother? Well, God is God. God doesn't have form. God is neither male nor female. But the point that Jesus is making here when he addresses God as our Father, um, which is he's picking up on some language from uh, the Hebrew scriptures and kind of the, the national identity that uh, has been played within um, the identity of Israel, um, a closeness of God and, the, and Israel. Jesus is picking up on that and extrapolating, saying that God is our God who is so intimate with us, that provides for us, that God is a parental. So, yes, God can be our father, our mother. It's about the relationship. It's the personal relationship between us and God. God is our creator, but God didn't create us and everything around us and then walk away. God is very much here with us, by us. Our Father, who is in heaven. So we move from this declaration of who God is, this God that is our God. We're all internet, interconnected with God, that God that is very personal, that's very much here to our Father who is in heaven. So God is both imminent as well as transcendent. God is also far away from us. God is in the heavens. God is in the mystery. 
of life. Our Father who is in heaven. We can also say that God, who is part of the mystery and part of the being of the world and of the universe and of all of creation, is very much knit into every aspect of our daily life. When we proclaim in the prayer, Our Father, who is in heaven. So, let's dwell on those ideas for a while. Let's dwell on this concept of that God cannot be owned, that we all have a relationship with God, one that is personal, intimate, as well as transcendent, mysterious. But we have a relationship. So let's take some time and let us enter into our holy space. Let us gather in this holy space. Some scholars believe that a better translation of Our Father, who art in heaven, is actually Our Father in the heavens. Not far off in the distance, but fully and completely here. Our Creator who fills every molecule from the farthest solar system to the inside of my lungs. Our Father who is closer than the air we breathe. So let us take some time and let us open up to God's nearness through a practice called breath prayer. Please place both feet on the floor and if you're able, open both hands. Say to God with your body what you are saying with your heart. I am here. I am open. And I believe you are here and close as the air I breathe. Become aware of your breathing. Noticing the air filling and exciting your lungs. Every breath is a gift. Thank God for that gift. With each breath in, pray your words for our Father. And with each exhale, offer an intention, a prayer to God. May you breathe in while saying, loving maker and breathe out to say I'm yours maybe your breath in to say eternal mother and breath out to say open my heart let your prayer be as simple as your breathing let your prayer be your offering Please join me in our prayers of thanksgiving and intercession. Satisfy us with your love in the morning, and we will live this day in joy and praise. Eternal God, creator of the world and giver of all good, we thank you for the earth, our home, and the gift of life. We praise you for your love in Jesus Christ, who came to heal this broken world, who died rejected on the cross, and rose triumphant from the dead. Because he lives, we live to praise you, our God, forever. Gracious God, who called us from death to life, we give ourselves to you. And with the church throughout all ages, we thank you for your saving love. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Generous, compassionate God, we gather before you to pray for the church, the world, and all in need. O God, our ruler, continue to send out your church on earth to be light and salt to the world. Keep giving us the heart to do your work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, our creator, you quiet the seas and silence the wind. Restore your creation to the perfection and beauty you spoke into being. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, our Redeemer, inspire leaders with the righteousness that comes from faith, so that your justice thrives throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, our Sustainer, comfort those who are lonely, fearful, or burdened by doubt. Give meaningful work to those who seek employment. Walk with those who are grieving or ill, and with all who face the last days of their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, our encourager, empower this assembly to boldly proclaim and live out your love to all who long to hear a word of hope and kindness. Equip us to use our hands, feet, voices, and minds to share the bounty you have given us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, our Savior, we rejoice in the example of the saints who have gone before us until we join them around your throne. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands we place all our prayers, spoken and unspoken, trusting in the mercy of Christ Jesus. Amen. Please join me in our departing prayer. O Creator God, we have gathered in your name. Grant us hearts to know your will. O Eternal Christ, we reside in your name. Grant us feet to walk in your way. O Holy Spirit, we depart in your name. Grant us ears to hear your voice. Please teach us how to pray. Please teach us how to live your holy prayer. Amen. Mm -hmm.